Regional Planning Commission. Uh, I'm going to do a... Uh, who's here? Richard Black. Here. Janet Miller-Schmidt. Absent. Ed Provo? Here. Dwayne Parmley? Here. Peter Beasley? Here. Marilyn Rodman? Here. Ida Russell? Here. All right. Uh, in our packet was the previous meeting minutes, <laughs> plus our special PC meeting minutes. Um, they're pretty extensive. Uh, when you have a chance, make a motion to approve or make any changes. Motion to approve. Okay. I need a second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, all right. Uh, staff and community reports. Uh, planning staff. Anya. Uh, the only report I have is about the delayed class testing. It was? Yeah. It was approved, I think, before that last. Video. How did the P end up? No. <laughs> How'd that happen? I thought he withdrew that. Uh, this is, okay, from Garrett. Dean Lay submitted a revised minor subdivision on March, March 8th, and after reviewing the plot, there were a few changes that needed to be addressed prior to the reporting. Prior to reporting, once the changes have been made, it appears that it will meet the town's zoning ordinance and subdivision regulation requirements and be making it round for signatures, if it hasn't already. Is that already done? Okay. Yeah. He changed the P. I guess so. Okay. I haven't been as involved with that process. I just remember the P quite a bit. <laughs> All right. Did you know that? Am I? This is the piece. Yeah. All right. Uh, building inspector's report. I guess it's been made so far. Uh, we've, uh, we've talked a lot about manufactured homes. And I think the last meeting, uh, I, I need that. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Talk about modular. 
modular homes? Well, the true definition of a modular home is a home that is constructed from scratch for a particular zone. In other words, we in Tennessee work for the, for the United States, we're in what they call zone 4A. That means wind loads 90 miles an hour, snow loads going to be 10, you know, 10, 10 pounds per square foot. That same modular home cannot be put over on the coast where we have hurricanes, tornadoes, blah, blah, blah. That home is constructed based on what their wind, lo wind loads and snow loads are. That's when they become a modular home. Now that's what I was told today. It's when they're constructed for our zone. When they're constructed, yeah, if you, but you can have a modular home constructed for our zone, but it's going to be constructed for 90 mile an hour wind loads and 10 pound snow loads. But that same modular home, and let's say over in South Carolina, would be a, a different, it would be constructed more, more strong, stronger to, to stand 120, 130, 100, maybe 110, 120 mile an hour winds. And, and you know, the snow loads are not going to be a factor, if you understand what I'm saying. So I want everybody, I want to clear that up. <coughs> So we have to be aware of what zone they're coming they're coming in on. That's true. It, it's not it's not a big deal. Okay. But we we talk, we you know we talked about in the past about decals and, and plates on mobile homes and what they really mean <coughs> what they, what they mean and that that's what they mean. Earl, does that pose a problem when you buy a used home? Well, I'm, I'm sure it would. It, it means probably wouldn't be anything that would be detectable as far as making a big e issue out of it. Uh, but legally, that's how it's supposed to work. I mean, you probably buy a home somewhere else, you know, and a home from here and take to South Carolina, nobody's going to care. It'd, blow, it'd probably blow away with the first storm come through. <laughs> but nobody would, uh, I don't think, I don't, legally, I'm not sure that that's an issue. Uh, there's, there's three things, four things I wanted to talk about just real quick uh, that I think is coming. And this body right here is going to have to be ready to, uh, and, and we're, we're, I think we're working on it, but I just want you to be aware. Accessory dwelling units, Anya, I think, has already been doing some work on that. That's something that you're going to have to face how we're going to do that. Uh, it's difficult, you know, with your existing zoning ordinance. You can't have two principal structures on the same lot. Uh, so if you got a mother-in-law or somebody you need, somebody needs to be taken care of, you got to figure out some way to have something there with them that can be their, maybe their own little private place. Uh, that's what they call the, uh, accessory dwelling units. And that's something we've got, to, well, there's parts of that that we've got, got to work with. You know, how, what, how are we going to do this? You know, and, there, and there's several, several answers out there. Uh, tiny homes. With tiny homes are going to, I get calls every day about where to put a tiny home or a tiny home community or those kind of things. And it's not going to go away. We're going to have to deal with that. We need to be ready for that. Agritourism, which we tasted a little bit of that already. That's something that, uh, that that's coming, uh, that we need to be prepared for. One more thing that happened, or I was told people this morning, you, know, you, you folks talk, you wouldn't believe how many phone calls that I get. That's one day I got 37 phone calls. But I got five yesterday just for my name. And it's just crazy. I mean, they're from all over the United States. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you all a piece of property on the zoning map right here that I was, I was called about yesterday. And it's right next to Cody's Rip. And this, this big piece of property, uh, right here, huge. And a gentleman asked me, he said, I want to put a bow pole barn in here and uh, make a little shop there and, you know, 
and then I'm going to build a house sometimes later on. Well, here's the way I've been dealing with those things. And good, bad, or ugly, I don't probably nothing in any of the ordinances that had anything to do with that. But in my experience, I've found that if you let somebody build an accessory structure before they build a house, they'll start living in it, and the house may never get built. Or I had an instance one time of a gentleman who wanted to put a, in, he owned a, uh, he owned a, uh, shop worked on vehicles. <coughs> he, he, there was an R1 district. He had a nice piece of property in. He wanted to build him a shop out there to work on his cars before he built a house. And we don't want that. That's not that's not what our one's about. But anyway, I, I, <coughs> I advised the gentleman on this property that he would need to build a primary structure before he could build a, an accessory structure. Well, Somebody else called me today, and they're talking about the same piece of property, and somebody probably that works for this guy. He says, what if we go in there and we build a, a pole barn, and we put part of it, you know, it's a living, living area, and the other part's going to be to keep the lawnmower in, and all this kind of stuff. Well, there's a name for that. What is it, Anna? Uh, yeah, the, uh, what do they call those things? House barns, or house something? I can't remember the name. What? I guess that's what it is. <coughs> Which that's something we're going to have to deal with. Well, I told him that he, you know, if that's all he was going to do, that'd be fine. But he says I want to build another. I want to build a house out there too. I said we well, can't have two principal structures on the same lot. He says, well, why don't I go to the planning commission and I just <laughs> split the lots into two different lots, and I'll build my house on this lot and my barn and residence on this other lot. I said, go for it. It's absolutely legal to do yeah. that. Yeah. It would not be on you. Yeah. But I get those all the time. <laughs> but, I, but I seriously, y'all need to tell me if you think I'm wrong when I tell them I, I, I won't let them put an accessory structure up until you got a primary structure. If you're not, that's something we might want to, you know, vote on or just decide to do it or not do it or whatever. Does Eagle have a temporary use permit? I'm sorry, what? Does Mont Eagle have a temporary use permit? No. No, 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 not, not normally. <laughs> I've heard of other communities um, allowing temporary, like with a time constraint. So, and then they, after a year passes, they come to the board again and discuss if you can continue living there or if you need to build a primary house. But the time gets, they get sticky. Uh, anyway, just put that in the, on the back burner, something you might want to think about, tell me how, how you think you need to do it. Uh, I also got a call yesterday, maybe the day before, uh, this little mental health facility over here, well, over here by the doctor's office. They've got, I think it's a 10 or 15 unit uh, Hamilton County Mental Health. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, it's right by the it's right by the rest home. Right in front. The rest home is right in the, behind it. Mm -hmm. That that unit's right there. Okay. That I was I was in, they inquired to me about adding ten rooms onto that structure. Which you would think that, you know, that may not be a big deal. But that that's a zone. R two, I believe. Uh yes. But and I, and I sent I sent them to you. Right. <laughs> and we looked into it. Yeah. And they are protected by state law because they're considered a commercial enterprise. Even though they're not conforming use, they are able to expand. Okay. And is this a day use or is it overnight? No, they're overnight. overnight. They stay there. Uh, they provide services. That would raise issues, I think. Does state still do C on this? Certificate of needs for beds still done in Tennessee? I don't know. I didn't look into that. But I just know that they're protected because they're a commercial enterprise, so they are allowed to expand even though they're not in the correct zone for a group home. Mm -hmm. well, they're across I, the street from a nursing home, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I get those great, those great things, I've got somebody I can go to for that. So they would have to expand that, probably. But there's, there's, there's the property no, they can have that. in the back, they're adding There's plenty of And they, they will send their site plan. To us to review and I'll probably come back 
come before you guys for that as well. Yeah, because she asked me what needed to happen, and I said, well, once we get past the legalities of it, then you'll need to stop playing. I do wish she's protected by state law. I've got, I've got a checklist or two. I've already got a checklist that the mayor gave me to look at. And in my opinion, uh, we've got people that do checklists, and I don't know why we need to do an extra checklist. Uh, of course, I'm just a building inspector, and please understand that whatever I do say is because I've been here many, many years, and uh, I, I try to do the best I can do for town of Montego. Have we figured out the tiny homes yet? Okay. Now it's in, in your in your anticipated zoning manual. There is a big section on tiny homes, and it, it reads. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and you've got the same thing in there on site plans. You've got the same thing in there on RVs, uh, recreational vehicles. That you know, if you don't read it, you don't know. But a lot of these things that, are, that are, have become somewhat of an issue are actually addressed. Anyway. Well, one of the things you might want to mention, or else, of course, you got the same calls I did, and I've been responding to them, and they came up and saw Deb. We've had two, I guess, two different realtors, I guess because realtors wanted Deb. They came in in two different areas that want to develop two tiny home communities. At this point, I'm just saying they want to develop. We're leaving it at that. I don't know if they've reached out to y'all, but they're wanting to set up meetings, and there's not many meetings scheduled with yeah. anyone. Yeah, and one of them is in a R1 section. Yeah, one of them is in a, a, an industrial yeah, section. Another one, another one possibly. Well, that's right up another section. The other one is, I think, maybe even out in Monty City Limits or in the growth boundary. So it's yeah. it's out of our purview, or mm -hmm. way way out. But I get a lot of calls, and uh, especially about things like that. Uh, we had another. I had another call. Another call on an RV park, which sounded promising. I mean, in to my in where it was going to go, you know. But we got to looking at it, and it's out of the city limits, it's and it's right, it's right. Right down here, <laughs> right down here, you know, by uh, Cross Interstate. There's an area right there. It's got a big V in it. It's not in the city. That's where the property's at. So, it wasn't in the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told them that you could be in the county and not put any of the RVs on the portion of property that are within Pond Eagle city limits. And I told them you could request to be annexed and ask if you were still able to get utilities and services. But I didn't think that he had much luck rezoning, so well, I told him not to go in that. You could try. It wasn't for Anya and him, I don't know what I did. I don't know what we did. Well, I have a whole team behind me. Did you have a question? I had a, a motion, please. Procedural motion yes. for this commission to vote on. That motion is that prior to a vote by this commission, that there be an open discussion on that issue by the commission and the public, and not wait to the end of the meeting to bring these issues up after we've already covered That could be worded better, I'm sure, but that's the motion. Okay, any, any discussion? I need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you. Will this be done during this meeting, or will you uh, next meeting? Next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you, Earl. You are an asset. I don't care what anyone says. Here's a lighter part. I get called that a lot. You're an asset. Okay. All right. That's good. Thank you. All right. For that one. All right. Uh, uh, anyway, all right, uh, moving on to old business, uh, new website information. Uh, Earl, you said you reviewed it. We tabled it from last meeting. All looks good that we can add 
I think it's fine. I mean, it's one of those, it's one of those type of things that after a while, if somebody sees something they don't like, it's easily fixed. It's easily fixed. Okay. All right. So we can add it. Do we need to vote on that? No, that's just the okay. Debbie? Okay, perfect. And then speaking of uh, this next item, which is <laughs> Nate's book right here, um, Marilyn, what do we want to do with this? Well, I talked to Earl, and he feels like it's another one of these things that we need to go slow. I mean, he's my advisor, but you know, and Anya and Southeastern Development, but to go slow before we actually dive into this, we need to have that plan before we adopt this one. Agreed. So we table it until we get a plan. So we'll moving on to a new business, uh, Agricultural Zoning Ordinance Discussion. Continued. Yeah. Um, so I did the survey, that wasn't very popular, <laughs> and nothing really conclusive could be found from it because you're right, everybody has very different opinions, and I had like, I don't remember the top of my head, but like two votes towards five acres, two votes towards 50, one vote towards 100 acre limit, so really the main point of having this discussion is because the reason I was brought up was because you allow agricultural uses in commercial and P2, but only for parcels that are over 50 acres, I believe, so that's why Matt could do what he did on his land. Moving forward, there are no other parcels that are 50 acres, so you're kind of, you know, there's not really any agricultural use that can be done anymore in that result. It's up to you if you want to change your ordinance or recommend to city council to change it, and that needs to be a discussion that we, you know, well, that I you guys have among yourself, or you do that public input plan and have a, like a land use plan managing your decision, a guiding your decision. I mean, it, as you mentioned, agritourism is, is on that, you know, it's hot for um, Tennessee and definitely our region right now um, because it's a good thing, in my opinion. <clears throat> But um, Monty Eagle has to decide how they want to handle that. I think that's probably a city council plan thing. What do you, what do you think, Marilyn? Um, that's, I mean, we're going to have to have direction as we move forward with it to make sure we do what's right. We won't be consistent with everyone. And um, it's sort of like tiny homes. I think we, it may take a little bit of time to get there, but once our decisions made, that's what we'll do. Yeah. <coughs> I, I don't want to rush into it, is what I'm saying. Right. I mean, because I know we're, we're going to have some animals coming down the pike for um, uh, the property next to the military museum that's coming down the pike. Is that Will that be affected? I mean, he doesn't, I don't think he's in the correct zone for it, right? He's in R1. He's not. It's still if it's down. It's still down, yeah. yeah. And he doesn't have the proper amount of acreage to he's got get rezoned. He's 36 acres, I think. Yeah, so it's not enough if he got rezoned to P2, if he was bordering P2, but... He's ordering P2. But, I mean, your zoning ordinance limits right. them at 50 acres. So. This is why we need that workshop. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of issues that we need to have consensus on before we move on. Yep. These it can't be haphazard. Mm -hmm. There are long term goals here. We talk, call ourselves a regional planning commission. You don't want to throw away any tools you might need, such as agricultural zoning, to protect our escarpment or our beautiful landscapes. Mm -hmm. but it just needs a lot of work before we throw it out there. And that will be covered in the town uh, master plan with the architects, right? Mm -hmm. With the town, the mm -hmm. public uh, meetings mm -hmm. and et cetera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually the next meeting is the 19th of April. The 19th or the 12th? The 19th. I think. We can see if she didn't change it to the 19th. Janet sent it out Maybe Thursday. That next meeting, we can make that presentation to the committee to you in yeah. May. Okay. Right, no, I'm talking to, you're talking about the city council meeting. I'm right. talking about the next town hall oh, meeting. Okay. It's the 19th. The 19th. It's the 19th at 6 o'clock at the Methodist Church because yeah. invitations were sent out to the county mayors. Uh, of course, you all. 5 to 7. 5 to 7? Okay, yeah. at the Methodist I Church. Have it. The last date I had it was on April 12th. Well, okay. I, under, well again, Jenny got out of town. Sure. That's the 19th. That's the 19th Tuesday at the USC, 5 to 7. Yeah. 
and the other side that everybody can be involved in that discussion and that development and be able to counsel. And I'm just saying it's supposed to be hiring an architect once we take the summary and develop another plan and land use, which will be done with that. But I mean, we want everybody involved in it. That's the reason we've had four, five meetings. So I think we've had five so far. Have we gotten the um, the youth uh, people involved? I saw the demographics of everyone. Have we included like parents and? Um, we to the school and principals. Have we did? Yeah. Okay. And we actually send them out letters this time to bring them if they want to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just I just think that all segments of our community. A lot, a lot of them are meeting goers. Does that make sense? Um, but it's important to get their input. Well, I think we're going to do a survey too, aren't we? After this last one, we're still going to do the survey. Not a school that we weren't going in. Okay. Sure. Well, if we feel like we need it, we can decide after that. But we're trying to reach out to everyone. That's the reason we send invitations to the school, to invite the parents, and to invite the teachers. We invited actually the principals from Grundy and from Mary, the three county mayors. Uh, the commissioners, we invited every day we could think of to come to this last one. Gotcha. All righty. Any other discussion on you about that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, do you have any direction that you, for me to go back and research or bring back? No. I, I don't. It kind yeah, of seems like. Not at this time. Because there's so much new development coming in, it's hard to make decisions about a land use plan. It really is. We need a land use plan. And it seems like there's just so much updates in the last year or two. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think a land use plan will solve a lot of issues. Um, what's, I mean, it just, well, I know I need it to make my decisions, and I think I'm sure our commissioners feel the same way. Uh, we need to know what the community wants and then make decisions accordingly. And I agree. I mean, and that's the reason for doing the town hall meetings to get the community's input, the residents, the business, and everyone to come back up with a plan. And I said, with the land use, where we're going, what we're going to do with it. I mean, uh, I was told yesterday, which is true, more commercial land has sold in the last six months in Mont Eagle than ever. And they are probably aware of it. The parcel out here sold beside a city hall. The Oakley Market sold. The property beside a Hardy sold. If Dean's closes this next week, I think he said next week, those parcels have all sold. And people were asked Earl, all these parcels are now closing. That I, that industrial part has been developed with someone new, the one you're talking about, the R1, those are large parcels. There's not been, uh, well, several people said yesterday in the bankers, they've not seen this much growth in 10 years probably. In the last year, there's been more parcels sold than before. So with those considerations, let me just ask the question, um, you know, water is our biggest concern, and, and sewer for that matter. Um, our role as a planning commission is to take that into account, Anya, or what? I don't know, I mean. Uh, we met with Beth today, and again, we'll go with this with y'all, and that was one of the things we discussed, because we've been working on infrastructure grants, we've been working on American recovery money. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get ready to get the money that's going to be released through state revolving funds. What she tell us, $33 billion today is going to go into infrastructure, going to be divided by 50 states on a margin. So it's never been released. So we're trying to make sure, as far as the city council, that the infrastructure is there, that the growth plan is there for the sewer plant and for the water, the ionized reviews, everything. And that's one of the things we're also pursuing with. Southeastern development that we've been working on for months. Um, but that was part of the discussion as well today. Yes, I the council's think. looking at that. But y'all, we've got to know what's going on to be able to to know how far we can grow. We've also met with Tracy City. So we, we treat all the Tracy Sitters sewer. So we've got to know how they're growing to be able to control what we're doing. So all that's got to go tandem. And there's a lot going on a lot we've got to get done, which we will. Is there some a, an impact fee? Uh, that There's not yet, but we discussed that today too. Okay, because I mean, if it's coming our way, my concern is water and sewer. Mm -hmm. 
So every time a plot goes through, it has to be signed off by the proper authority. Okay. That isn't something that PSD has to have so we know on. Yeah. That's something else that someone, you know, you have people looking out for your best interest. Okay, great. Yeah, so, back to your original question. Is that our remit to look at utilities? Well, now that's, that's done on a site plan. I know. So that's signed off on a site plan, including capacities. I'm sorry, what? Capacities. When, when, he, when yeah. he signs that, he says it works. Okay. And that includes, you know, it's like septic. You know, you got to have mm -hmm. septic. You got to self septic all mm -hmm. on the site plan. So once yeah. that's signed off, and a road, I mean, it, and that is not our responsibility, that's water and sewer. That's it. And that's Correct. The that it's not our responsibility. It. They sign off on it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. But there is an impact mm -hmm. gateway at work for sailing lanes. We sent the question the impact today. Okay. Scary. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you're on the board. Can I get some clarification? When John signs off for water and sewer, is he signing off that there is sufficient capacity or is he signing off that it is available? Both. Oh. both. It should be both, Nate, because that's one of the things he's now keeping in track of <coughs> as we've discussed with the council. But first, yes, it is available. Secondly, he's checking the capacity to make sure that we have enough because we know what, where we're about. Once we get the INI from Tracy and the assembly, which we're working on clearing up, we know what we've got areas to work on ourselves. We know where what capacity level we're at, what percentage, and where we're going to be in two years. Where we've got to, we'll probably have to expand in two years, regardless because of all the residential, much less the commercial. But yes, he does. Any questions, commissioners, for Anya about the agricultural? Okay. All right. I'm going to move on to. Uh, Commissioner Provo. Well, I think we discussed that we take these site guidelines and put them in a workshop format okay. instead of doing it during our regular meetings. Gotcha. Uh, because the site guideline questions circle back around and do what our remit is. What do we do? Can I just uh, outline what I've handed out to you guys in that? Yes, so please. the first four pages is what's currently in your Chapter 10 site plan requirements in your zoning ordinance. The next page after that is what Ed sent in. And so the highlighted part is what's not already included in the requirement. So I guess it's up to you to have a conversation during the workshop if that's something you want to include. Okay. Where is your jurisdiction? And, um, and then uh, Garrett and my suggestion is on the last page, something Saudi Davy does, it's almost like a checklist um, where they have everything signed off by uh, the building inspector, public works, police department, fire department, city hall staff. Hmm. Um, and it's sort of like a, they look at the site plan and access control, all the access points. If that's something you want to include in yours, it could be My question on the workshop, do we need 30 or uh, an hour? 30. 30? Okay. Prior to. Okay. All right. And we passed the public comment section for next month. Uh, any other business commissioners before I move on to a uh, person who's having business before the commission? Drain, Marilyn? Mm -hmm. yep. Richard? Ed? Peter? Myself? I think that's it. Anya, any other before we? Okay, thank you so much. All right, let's move on to the last part, part which is going to change for next month. Um, we made the decision um, before anything we vote on to have public comment on. Uh, so that will start next month. So let's have a hearing of persons having business before the commission. You get three minutes. Anybody want to chit chat about anything? Have at it, Nate. Yeah, I just I was following up on the lighting ordinance, and I would encourage, I agree it's a complex subject, um, but I would encourage you to think about, given the amount of development that's coming in, and the fact that several people have talked about this being a critical issue, to at least think about looking at that ordinance and adopting some downlighting guidelines within the commercial district, which is a fairly simple, straightforward thing to do that doesn't require pulling a whole lot of ordinance simply helps guide our future commercial development like we 
we did on, on Petro to say, hey, we want the lighting that you use exterior um, to meet these guidelines. It can be done as, as simply as, as paid. So that would be for new development that was coming in? Correct. Okay. Do you feel uh, that you can do that synopsis? Uh, probably if I could talk to Anya. Um, would that include the lighting for signs? No. That, that I have two different things in there. The signs is one, and then there's another one, the lighting. So it's got two different issues there. Yeah, it's lighting. Yeah, but I'm saying you're still talking no, to... You don't want backlit signs. Yeah. You want signs. Yeah, but that, if you read this, there's two different types of lighting in here. That yes. one signage and one... the discussion. As far as the <coughs> perimeter lighting, if you want to say for lack of a better term. Uh, to answer your question, I have to do some more research. That's the but reason I, I don't recommend that. that. If that's something... To, but I, I, I wonder if that's not a simpler, a smaller bite of the apple. That There's got to be a smaller bite for right now. Uh, it needs to be implemented sooner rather than later if this is all coming forward. Carl, could you look at the, the lighting? Because you've got development other places how they're actually implementing it now so when we can look at implementing something without going to see something you've recommended we wait up because you deal with this with building codes you well, deal with this with the signage well there's no other jurisdiction that's doing this that I there's think nobody else that's doing nobody's it. even considered it okay i can uh, go back and ask the team if they know anyone who has expertise on this topic okay that would probably be the user friendly something that we can implement <laughs> I know I'd heard in some of the comments that uh, residential lighting was one of those issues, but that's not right now, I guess. Okay. Anybody? We did find out with some of the residential, and Nate and I both did, because we actually got the complaints that came to us. It wasn't us. It was uh, like one of the lights going to the church. The, the lighting scheme that we use, if it's toward the road, the town pays for it. If it's toward the house, the person pays for it, or the business. Well, this was the church had a new lot put in, and the person was complaining about the lot, and we said, you really need to talk to your neighbor because we can't control that. That's the one that the uh, Slavery Co-op put in for them. So a lot of these issues we're finding out in the residential neighborhoods are more personal issues than it is something that the town can control. Sure, that's good neighbor policies, right? Uh, anybody else? I had a question since you brought up about the sign, yep. lighting for the sign. Now, I was originally told that the new signs had to go before the planning commission, but I don't, I don't ever see that. And the planning commission needs to approve those signs. The only time the planning commission approves is a new development, just like RBT. They had to have the sign ordinance is actually in the zoning ordinance. Right, and and just when we had a plan review for the minor subdivision for the country mark. Chad Reese actually stated that the sign had to go before the planning commission. That was a comment on his review. That's a good question, Earl. And, and we did go and get a permit to <coughs> move to City Hall. We're not sure where it went from there, but you know, permit was granted. So I'm just curious, being that the site, I think it actually states uh, the requirement for a site plan is pretty detailed in the current ordinance. Yes. But a lot of times you see things coming in that don't include all that. And, and that's fine. There's a different reason why you guys might say not necessary, not applicable. So the sign was just a question. Since we're talking about lighting, I'm curious who does. With bigger developments come in, big sign, neon. Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent question. Um, we've only had the RPT sign come before. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. You're, uh, do you do sign the, the new. Southern Cars is getting ready to come in. It's fixing to break ground, and we did theirs. So anything uh, commercial with a any, sign. Any brand new development that's got a lot of signage has to come before the Planning Commission, and it is reviewed by Southeast Economic Development. But on the other side of that, the little places like y'all got, you know, when you've got a place that's just moving into a little part of that, that's moi. <laughs> 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 That's why you're an asset. Yes. <laughs> um, did I answer your question, Tim? Yeah, I, I think I'm just. I think it's a process you, you guys are currently working through right now. We are working through a lot. Yeah, we're trying to be a lot more user friendly and consistent. Um, 
as best we can. I think we learned a lot. Um, but yeah, that's the only one I heard about. But it, apparently, we're maybe hearing about more. So, okay, gotcha. Anything else? I mean, honestly, please chit chat. Go ahead. Um, I had a question. Our property is, which you know, is the farm, 196 acres. If we were wanting to put a house on there, and that's, I know we we have C2, but we have the zoning, the ordinance for agricultural use, and because um, a farmer's house is considered incidental to the farm, we should be able to start building on there. So I just wanted to, but before I did that, Good. and got shut down, <laughs> I wanted to make sure it was okay that we move forward to do that. Well, you know, I did a deep dive into agricultural use during this whole process, and I mean, in theory, you're right if it was an agricultural zoned um, parcel, but it it wasn't. It's a C2 zoned parcel, and that that changes things a little bit. So I don't know how that changes, and that's going to be an Anya um, discussion because I know in, originally that's what you had wanted to do, and I know it's in the back of, you know. What you need, what you want done, but because it's a C2, it's not as simple as right, right. That's what I want to yeah. bring it to you, and not just you know. Yeah, and I don't know if it's you know, is it a subdivide and putting a house on a separate right? And where it would be would be back almost to the corner, where, like back up to the corner where Cooley's Rift is kind of. So it almost is really adjacent to that. residential land anyway. Right. So, but I just wasn't sure how to proceed. I tell you, the, I tell you the best way to do it if the city wants to pay for it. Legal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I've already been <laughs> recommended no, no legal opinion. <laughs> 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 we will that. discuss that <laughs> stuff if we really need it. We just don't randomly do it. But yeah. Wasn't that what you were just talking about building the, the garage before you built the main structure? Wasn't yeah, that just what you were talking about? But that's typically in a, in a residential district. And this is a city. And all this is kind of now with, uh, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, but agricultural being in. To, I mean, that's, that's what threw us off the whole time. Yeah. Convoluted. I, yeah, and I don't know how it got changed to C2. I mean, it's been a farm since 1907. Oh, it was never really an agriculture zone. <clears throat> if you want to go back to it, and I went back to 2019, whenever all this was discussed, it was still commercial property. And that's another discussion that we don't want to get into what it was. And if it, the bank had it, and you know, Harry and them had it, you know, yeah. different things before y'all. But with C2, with agriculture use, which didn't include animals, agriculture in that definition was plants. You know, and it wasn't a business. And then we had to actually amend the uh, zoning ordinance to include your animals whenever that was done after we came on board. Is that not correct for the husbandry? We had to do the amendment? But I think that goes back to our agro agribusiness, our discussion here is that, I mean, if that was traditional, you would have a house there. I mean, that's what it says in agricultural yeah. use. So that's where our gray area is. So we're going to have to figure that one out. Okay, so that would come like after the workshop on land use. <laughs> but you would still have to have a permit for a house. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. just start building a house. You have to see this man here the permit oh, yeah. before, before you can, because with the Poe Barn, the Poe Barn turns okay. into a different building. And see, that's where there was some confusion. And, and we really yeah. need to try to get that resolved somewhere down the line, too. You know, mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Smith with y'all, and, and see what we need to do to get, get that little issue fixed. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the Poe Barn is acceptable in agricultural use. Don't need a permit, so it's. I've opened my eyes to a lot of things during this process. So all right. Um, any other questions on that? We're, we're going to work on that house. Yeah, it's just okay. So that's. I'll just wait for y'all. I don't know. What to do. I can work things. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to my planning team, and then if we need additional help, I'll reach, in, I'll reach out to about the school. Council, well, before you reach out to make sure that right. it comes to here, yeah, because Absolutely. we got into that yes. discussion too today, and make sure that Earl's included too, because he has to sign off on all of this. And maybe our staff can help you find a solution. Okay. But um, maybe after this meeting, or I mean, I have not.
adventure is going to be a time one. How's that? <laughs> It's going to be mother-in-law suite. Um, yeah. Anya is going to for the residential be working building with you. That's how we're going to resolve that, and then we're going to find a solution. Okay. okay. Any other? Kim, you're so good at this. Any questions? Any other no, questions? No. Are you sure? Okay. Anybody else? All right. Once again, we're going to try to make this a lot more user-friendly and interactive, and make sure that we are hearing what you have to say as well. I think that's what we agreed on during our workshop. So, any a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? Uh, Perfect. Thank you all.